In this episode of The Christian Philosopher, we'll talk about part two on how to prove that the universe was created. Welcome back, everyone. Scott Sullivan here from the Aquinas School of Theology and Philosophy. I've been doing a series of videos on how to prove that the universe was created. And I'm talking about the material, time-bound, changing, you know, physical universe. And I'm arguing from arguments, classical arguments in philosophy. I'm arguing that this universe that I'm talking about could not have existed forever. It does not go back forever in the past it had to have a starting point a point starting point so these are four classical arguments for the finite nature of the past that's what we're going through and this is the second one the second argument that shows this the world could not have always existed this is the argument from the impossibility of forming an actual infinite by successive addition i'm going to explain to you um, what that means. But before I get started, I first want to talk a little bit about the nature of the past. I mean, what is the past anyway, right? Um, well, I think we have to say, if we're going to be reasonable, if we're going to do good philosophy and be reasonable, you know, don't, don't say anything stupid, but be reasonable, we have to say a couple of things, I think, about the nature of the past. Number one, we have to say that the past was formed successively. The past was formed successively. That means it didn't all happen at once. It happened one thing after another. So you had your first birthday and then your second birthday and your third birthday and so on, right? There was the year 1991 and then it was 1992 and, 19, and, and so on. You get the idea. It didn't all happen at once in the past. One thing happened after another. That's the first thing I think we have to say um, about the nature of the past. Um, the second thing I think we have to say about the past is that it's completed. The past is completed. It's over and done with. Right? It's not going to happen. It has already happened, you see. So those are two things that I think uh, we have to say about the past. These are what we might call necessary properties about the past, if we're going to be reasonable, right? Number one, the past was formed successively. And number two, the past is completed over and done with. Okay, so I think any reasonable person can agree on those two properties uh, regarding the nature of the past. But what? But what happens if we now say, like some atheists want to say, what happens if we now, now say that the past is also infinite, right? It goes back forever, right? Would that make any sense given what we already said? And the answer, I think, is going to be no, absolutely not. So once you add on this third thing now, the, the saying that the past is infinite, you know, it's not just uh, formed successively. It's not just completed. It's those things, but it's also infinite. So you lop, you know, infinite on top of those other things. Now you run into a whole lot of problems. Now you're running smack dab, I think, right into contradiction. Okay, so that's what this argument uh, discusses. We're talking about the argument against, or the, I'm sorry, the argument from the impossibility, the impossibility of forming the infinite by successive addition. By successive addition here, I just mean adding one thing after another, right? I give you $1, I give you $2, I give you $3. I don't give you all the dollars at once. I, I, I give you them by successive um, addition. So my argument here in this video is that you can never get to the past that way. You can never reach the past by adding one thing after another. In fact, that is impossible. And if you don't see this, just do a little thought experiment here, right? Imagine if you started counting right now and you're going to count through all the numbers, right? You're going to get through all of them. How many numbers are there? You know, infinity, an infinity number of numbers, right? So you're going to count through all of them one at a time, go, right? One, two, three, da, da, da. Can you ever get through them all? Can you ever reach an infinite by counting one thing at a time? The answer is clearly, clearly no. You can't get closer to the end, like, oh, I got three, four, five, 500, 600. I'm closer now than, than I was. You're not closer. You're not any closer to the end than when you started because there is no end. You can't count through all the numbers. You see what I mean? You can't form an actual infinite by adding one thing at a time. Let me give another example. I'm going to give you an infinity number of dollars 
one at a time. Ready, go. One, two, three. Same problem, right? So the point is, is you, you can't reach infinity by just adding one thing after another. I think the problem is pretty clear here, right? Uh, to reach the infinite by adding one thing after another, you'd have to have a point where the infinite is just one step away. Do you see that? You have to have a point where I'm getting closer, getting closer, getting closer, and I'm one, one more, I'll have an, an infinite number. But you can't possibly do that because the infinite is never one step away. The end is never one step away because there is no end. I think that's pretty clear. Um, if you think about it, if you don't get that, uh, you don't get this, this sort of counting analogy uh, that I'm using that I don't think I can help you, it seems pretty clear to me that you cannot reach the infinite by successive addition. And that is the whole problem here. This is the problem of successive addition and trying to reach an infinite that way because finite plus finite always equals finite. I think, again, that that is pretty clear. So to push this a little bit further, I think we can say that the very idea of an infinite past is a contradiction, right? The past, number one, was formed successively. The past is completed. And then you say it was infinite on top of that. I think that lands you uh, in contradiction. Why? To posit an infinite past, I think, posits this contradiction. That which has been formed successively is that which cannot be formed successively. Let me say that again. That is, I think, the contradiction that you land into when you try to say the past is infinite. That which has been formed successively, the past, is that which cannot possibly be formed successively, the infinite. So you see, it's just, it's just a clear uh, contradiction. So I think we can summarize our argument this way. Premise one, if the universe has always existed, then the past reached infinity step by step by adding one thing after another. But it is impossible for anything to reach infinity by adding one thing after another. Therefore, the universe has not always existed. So for this reason, I think we can know that the universe had to have a beginning, had to, and that implies it was created, as we'll see in a later video.